Welcome to week five lab session. This week we're going to do um, a cool uh, balloon pop game in Scratch. So we're going to learn some of the basics of how to uh, create uh, sprite animations, loops, um, if else statements, and keep track of the score to end the game as well. Um, so I already completed the exercise here on the screen that you can see the, the code running actually. Uh, I'm actually going to stop it and then run it again. You can see that I'm keeping score and when I click the balloon um, it's producing a sound like the pop sound and um, when I reach a, a score which is five um, it prompts the message you won and uh, the game stops. So that's basically the essence of the balloon pop game. So we're going to learn some of the basics of uh, how to go about creating the uh, sprite animations and uh, we are not going to create multiple sprites this time actually there are multiple ways you can approach this uh, this game but i'm going to show you some of the um, some of the fundamentals behind using loops and uh, conditionals and how we can actually keep track of the score as well so i'm going to create a new um, new scratch project so that we can start from scratch <laughs> And let's see. So the first thing is we need to create a, a background. So I'm going to delete this cat sprite, uh, go choose a backdrop. And for this exercise, I have, I've actually picked something really simple. I picked the concert uh, backdrop and I also picked another one, but I'm going to get into that later. And then we are going to choose a sprite, uh, which is a regular balloon sprite. Now, uh, the balloon is a bit large, so you might want to actually shrink its size a bit. Direction we can keep it upwards as 90. I'm actually going to make it uh, slightly larger so that we can see it um, a bit better. Um, so when we go to costumes, you can see that this balloon has some coloration. And, um, and eventually, we might want to actually animate the balloon colors as well. That's totally up to us. Uh, if you want to click on a character sprite like a balloon and after it pops you want it to disappear then we need to create an empty um, an empty character sprite here as well probably so again you can go um, you, you can approach this game in a bunch of different ways but the the main uh, gimmick is that um, we want um, we want the balloon to move around randomly and then we want to be able to click on the balloon and we want to hear either an animation like a pop sound or we want it to disappear and we want to keep track of the score and once that score reaches a threshold let's say after we pop five balloons we want the game to end so that's uh, that's basically what we are trying to achieve here so uh, i'm actually going to start with um, the basic motion of the um, of the balloon so we go to um, events and when the green flag is clicked we want the balloon to move around so I'm going to uh, basically start moving it, moving it around so if I go to motion and then I choose as a glide one seconds to random position now if I run this animation you see that it only ran once so we want this balloon to actually keep um, keep gliding around so one way to achieve that is to create a loop so um, basically this function, this glide one second to any position, it needs to run multiple times. Uh, and we can do that by going down and um, using forever. For instance, this is a, this is a loop. And if I plug this in here and put glide one second to any position, run the green flag, you can see that it keeps repeating that function. So it keeps gliding to a random position after the green flag is clicked. So this is uh, the basic uh, dynamic of the motion. Um, now, uh, we can actually do something else. We can, uh, for instance, while it's gliding, we can change the balloon's appearance. For instance, we can go to looks and we can uh, switch to a different costume. We can also um, change color effect. For instance, we can change color effect by, let's say, 10. And when I run this, you can see now uh, as it's gliding to random positions, it's also changing its color uh, by an amount of 10. So this is um, this is basically constantly doing. Now the only thing that's missing is when I click on it, nothing happens, right? So that we need to be able to interact with this game. 
Um, so we need to be able to notice when we are clicking on sprites. So if you go to um, control or events, let's see when the sprite is clicked. So under events, there's when the sprite is clicked. We want to be able to um, basically hear a sound, right? So if you go to sound, we want to play the pop sound until done. So let's try the try this now so if I start the game so it basically creates this pop sound right so that's that's working and um, we might also um, basically there are a bunch of ways we can animate this game so the version I had was once I click on the balloon it not only pops but it also creates a clone so it basically multiplies the amount of balloons on the screen so you can achieve the score really fast um, so we can actually do it that way. We can also uh, create some sort of uh, code here. Let's say the balloon glides in a random location. I'm, a I'm actually going to do it uh, both ways for you to see it. So let's say when we click on this balloon, we want to keep the score. We want to increase the score. So we need to essentially create uh, a score variable. So if I go to variables, then uh, choose my variables and call it score. Uh, for all sprites, we, we want the score to be kept for all sprites and now the score is defined um, now initially we want to set the score to be zero right now there is a score tab on the left top of the animation and after we click this character sprite we want to change the score by one so let's see if this is going to work so when I press green flag so when I hear the pop, you see the score is going up, right? So that's basically working fine. Um, now, one thing we can do is um, we can actually create this effect um, like in a bunch of ways. So if I make a duplicate of this, and now there are two balloons, if I run the uh, animation, now if I click on either of these balloons, we can keep we can still keep the score, right? So we can actually make it uh, make the game uh, by using multiple sprites uh, we can also make them pass on the player so for instance uh, rather than uh, this like like rather than seeing them all all the time on the screen after we pop onto one we can actually hide it or we can actually uh, switch to a costume that is hidden right so we can also do it like this so if I go to um, I deleted the sprite but I'm I have one sprite now I go to its costume I duplicate this costume and I'm going to delete this costume here so we have an empty uh, costume basically and then I go back to the uh, to the game to the code so initially we wanted to have the regular costume which is balloon 1a so when I run it uh, it basically comes up like this but after I um, click on it, we want it to disappear. So I want it to switch to balloon C2. So if I run the green flag again, let's see, it now, it, it's gone basically, right? So the script is still running, the game is still running, but I'm not seeing anything else. So that's essentially, um, it's not gonna um, create any effect. Um, now we can also make it um, pass on some sort of uh, function, right? So for instance, we can um, we can make a duplicate of this. Then we can broadcast a message, right? So we can call this message pop one, and uh, when the second sprite, let's say we duplicate this guy, and then when this guy receives the message pop one, it basically switches to the costume um, a one. Right, so let's try doing this basically so that the first balloon will pop and it will uh, pass on to the to the second one. But this guy should start as hidden first, right? So when we click on the green flag, it should be hidden. So after the first balloon is popped, the second balloon will be visible and it's passing on the message basically. So that's essentially what we're trying to achieve. So let's try working with this. So when I press the green, after I pop this, the first balloon disappeared and the second balloon is now visible, right? So we can also keep the game like this, but then I have to duplicate these balloons like 10 or 20 times and it, we have to pass messages between them. There's actually a simpler way of doing this, so I'm going to show you that way as well. 
So we're going to delete this broadcast message and we're going to start with the visible uh, balloon image. So when I run the green, it's uh, now incrementing the story as well. So, but rather than passing on a message or passing on, let's say, uh, or disappearing, let's say we make a clone of this, right? So we make the balloons multiply themselves. So there's actually a function under control. It says uh, create clone of myself. And that's exactly what we want. So when I press the green flag, when I press onto the balloon, you can see that everywhere I press it, it's creating a clone of it. Uh, and this, these clones are not animated yet, but it's basically enabling us to create an instance of that object, right? So we can also keep building upon um, this logic. So if I go to um, when I start as a clone, for instance, because we now have clones in the, in the game. So when I start as a clone, uh, then we can maybe have this sort of animation be applied to the clone as well. So for instance, we can make the clone do exactly the same as, uh, so let's make a copy of this portion. And this guy goes here, the same guy goes here. So let's see, uh, we don't want to change the score. So I have to take the score out of there. It's score is only set to zero when the green flag is clicked. And if I'm a clone, I want to be visible and I want to glide to a random location and I want the color effect to change by 10. Let's, let's try doing that. So if I start again, now I click on it and now the balloons are multiplying and the, um, and the effects are changing, color effects are changing as well, right? So now, of course, uh, when I keep playing and I, I keep pressing on these buttons, you can see the not score is increasing and my screen is being uh, crowded with balloons. So essentially we want to end the game as well. So we need to use the score somehow. And uh, that's actually pretty easy. So because we have a global variable called the score here, we can check uh, at every time whether that score has met some, um, some threshold, right? So because we have this forever loop here, inside that, for, uh, inside that forever loop, we can go to control and we can have this uh, statement. We can check if the score, uh, let's say under forever, if the score is um, greater than, or uh, greater than, let's say greater than, if the score is, so I put this operator, which compares a variable to a number and go to variables and bring my score in. So if the score is, let's say greater than five, uh, then essentially we want to um, stop the game. So we want to stop all. Um, and we want to maybe change the backdrop and display some message as well. So let's say I run this and so I'm clicking sometimes. Uh, so now it's five, now it's six and it's stopped, right? So after it reached uh, six, it stopped everything. It's just visualizing uh, the regular balloon. Um, by default and um, well we can make it a bit more interesting of course but we are building uh, on this uh, slowly so maybe we can have a message or we can maybe switch the background uh, when the score uh, has ended right so if I go to backdrops click on stage go to backdrops uh, we can create a new backdrop here so we can actually uh, I guess duplicate well we can write on here we can write some message or we can just delete this um, let's see we can add some color and we can add some text so we can write you want and make this kind of flashy color like yellow we can make it large as well and that's the message we want to display so after the game ends we want um, this message so rather than concept 2 you want that's the costume name and we go back to the code and switch to balloon because the code is written under balloon now initially we want the backdrop to be the regular concept backdrop right so if I go to looks and switch backdrop to concert we want to when I press the green flag we want to start with the concert background but after the score reaches five, we want to stop everything and switch the backdrop to be U1. 
So I'm going to make this score uh, really low, like two, so that we can check that this is going to work. So now it's two, now it's three, and you won, and the game stops. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now, um, essentially our game is ready. I'm, I'm checking if there's anything else I'm missing. Uh, basically, we have the sound animations there. We have, um, we have the uh, clone animations as well. And uh, one last thing maybe we can add is, maybe we can also add another, I also added a third backdrop. Like um, we can, um, we can animate the color flow a little bit more as well. So this is this is really simple, but um, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, so we can, for instance, say, um, go to control, um, like when, uh, go to events, and when the backdrop switches to, let's say, the concert, uh, we want to clear all the, all the graphic effects, maybe the balloon, uh, colors don't do not change and then I can also create another backdrop so let's load another backdrop let's I used concert and then we can use also the neon tunnel and initially we want to start with concert and then we want to switch to the neon backdrop so let's say when I have the neon tunnel we want to change the um, the color effect by five Right, so that's um, basically what's going to happen. But there is no way of changing between the concert and the neon tunnel yet. So that's something we can also add uh, to the script. So I did it by randomizing uh, the backdrop. Backdrop. So we can also do under forever when things are moving around. Uh, we can actually um, basically have an if statement. So if you go to control if uh, else statement. So we're going to check if some variable is smaller or greater than some other variable. If that condition is met, then it's going to run the first part of uh, this plugin. If it's incorrect, then it's going to uh, run the else segment. And we can go to operators and I can basically check um, if some random variable, let's say we pick a random from one to 10, if that random variable is less than, let's say, five, right? So there's a 50-50 chance of the backdrop switching. And we can then say that we want to switch the backdrop to, we want to switch the backdrop to concert. If not, we want to switch the backdrop to um, neon tunnel, okay? And I can pl plug this in inside the script as well. So this is basically becoming kind of our game loop now. So when we have the neon tunnel, we want the colors of the balloons to change. But when it's the concert, we want them to be stable. And it, that's exactly what's happening as well. So if I run the script now, you can see that when it's the concert, the colors of the balloons are straightforward. They're same, they're blue. Uh, but when they're in the neon tunnel, then they're getting some more color and I reach the score and I get uh, the message that I want basically. So that's that's essentially um, uh, what the game is about. So it's it's really simple game. Uh, you can also make it a lot more interesting with these backdrops. Maybe you can play around with the balloon directions, how you want the balloons to move around. Uh, but essentially you want to create this type of forever loop and inside that forever loop you want the uh, sprites to move around at random positions and then I also added some more functionality like we can have some random trigger switching the background and that background can affect the coloration of the balloons and rather than creating multiple sprites you can clone the balloons as well for this case and don't forget to keep track of the score too because that score is important for you to end the game so I'm going to set the final score to be 10 it to be five sorry and then when I run the game and it's now it's five and six and game over basically I won the game so uh, that was it for this week's lab session um, I know it's um, it, it may not be as complex as you imagine it to be because we are getting into some of the basics of coding so there are like some loops some if else statements and we're keeping track of variables as well um, so I want you to play, play around with this uh, algorithm a bit uh, and build a balloon pop game 
and uh, show us what you can do, how however you want to customize the game, and we are looking forward to what you're going to come up with. So have fun.